next on Airwolf. What was your experience of looping lines after a day's filming? When we were done on set, we weren't quite done with the day. Often, we would go to looping directly from location or from the set, whatever they needed to replace sound, either for wind or a noise on the set or sometimes even for intention. That was direction from Dawn, if we got something on intention. But we'd go in, and Jim O'Brien was the um, the audio producer, and working with Carol Gilson, Mike Schneider, and then later in season three with Rick Kilbaugh. And we'd go from whatever location we were, uh, if it was out in the, the cabbage fields, they'd uh, tell me as I was just getting done, they'd come and say, Jeannie, they need you in looping. And I would go directly back to the studio and go to looping. I do remember one particular time, I, I actually was pretty good natured about it because Universal was so close to my house. In my mind, I was like, well, I'm almost home. Maybe I can get a cup of tea or something while I'm looping and then go crawl into bed. So anyway, I'm done. And I was just exhausted, almost to the point of of tears. I was just so tired. So I got into the car, and I just start to start the car, and there's a tap on my window. And I turn and look, and it's the first AD, and he says, Jeannie, they need you in looping. And I just remember just bursting into tears and said, isn't this something that we can do tomorrow? I'm so tired. I was like, no. They've got to get this show that they want to loop. It's got to go today. This has to be done now. So I pulled myself together and I get over there. I I think Carol was there that day because I do remember talking to her about this and saying, I don't know how much more of this I can physically do. And I also don't know how good the quality of my voice is going to be on, on the looping because your voice also starts to change with exhaustion. Just nervousness. You just get nervous that, oh gosh, we're not going to get it done and and all of that. Carol reassured me everything was going to be fine. We only had three or four lines I needed to loop. Jim would have had it all set up. I'd walk into a dark room. They'd have a huge screen with picture up so I could see what I was doing with a count so that I could see when I'm supposed to come in and, and time it right to match my lips. I had done a lot of this on the first five episodes because of the accent. I came in with a Texas accent, but they wanted more. And so we had to go in and fix that. That was all done with looping. On this particular day, I think I had about four or five lines and Jim had it set up on the music stand. We did it probably one or two times. It was for sound more than intention. And so those are always easier to do because it's easier to match the lips. Once you know how you said the line and what what it sounded like, you could match it pretty much. But intention is very hard to actually match. We did it, (laughs) but it's usually harder. So they got me done and they got me out of there. And I'm sure that that tape was immediately taken to Leon and Leon put things together and then Leon raced it over to CBS. So those were the quick things that we did. You know, I got to say, poor Jim and Carol and Mike. That particular day, I I came in just past weeping. I probably looked a dish rag. I felt a dish rag. I was just, oh, I was just, I didn't know how I was going to get the energy up to do this looping. And they they would have jollied me along and probably gotten me a cup of tea and, and I would have gotten done. But we did that many, many, many days out of the eight days that we would have been shooting. We would have been looping actively as we were shooting and as they were getting the film so they could put it all together and get the show to CBS. I think looping is never an actor's favorite thing to do simply because you feel like, oh gosh, you know, I gave it 150% in the filming and in the, in the take. And how can I possibly get to that on one line? Or they didn't hear one word at the end of the sentence, and that's why we're looping, you know. Um, How do you match that intensity and what the character was going through at the moment? I think we all ended up to be uh, pros at it by the end of of filming. After the first couple of times, you got it. Um, It was no longer about you as an actor. It was about getting the film in the can and getting it to CBS. And better that than being cut from the scene. (laughs) <laughs> which could have also happened. 
And then they would just dub that line and you wouldn't have to match what your mouth was doing. Anyway, those were my experiences. Dubbing, uh, I'll just say quickly the difference between looping and dubbing. Looping, you're actually doing it to film. You're watching what's happening and it's usually the same words unless there was a a swear word that they wanted to take out or put in, so then they would figure out what that word was and how it matched your mouth. And then dubbing is not necessarily to your picture. You could be dubbing over somebody else's face on camera or whatever, but they were just getting the line. And a lot of times it was a line that was perhaps added. And then, of course, you have to think back to that script. Was it the thing that we shot today? Typically, if they were adding a line, it was something that was a couple days old at least because it had gone to the editors. The editors had put together the film. They either needed something to cover a shot and or Don said, I want this information. We didn't have it in the shot or in the script, but it would really add to the show. So let's put that information in over another, a different picture. So sometimes you see the chopper flying and you'll hear Ernie talking or Jan. Those are the kinds of things that would have been dubbed versus looped, if that makes sense. But golly, what an incredible team of producers and, and writers, and you do what you have to do to get the picture. Airwolf will continue. <laughs>